everybody good? Still a little bit. Okay. Yeah, can we stand right here? I'm going to get out of the shot. I'm just making sure. Okay, can, can everybody hear me all right? Sound level's good? Okay. Uh, thank you for coming today. My name's Kevin Morris. Uh, this is my wife, Laura. Um, I'm joined here by the Ailes family. We have Al and, and Kim. They are Albert's uh, uh, parents. And we also have Jeff Weaver here with Crosspoint Church. Uh, both the Ailes and Morris family suffered a tragic loss. We both lost our sons in the same accident three weeks ago, less than a week after they had graduated from high school right here at Southeast High School. Our boys were so excited to take the trip to Peru. They wanted to hike to Machu Picchu. They wanted to see the Inca ruins and the Rainbow Mountains. Both boys worked after school jobs and saved their money so that they could pay for the trip themselves. They were so excited about going and exploring new cultures but they were riding a scooter on May 24th when they were struck by a reckless speeding public transportation bus in the town of Cusco, Peru. We traveled to Peru and we brought our boys home and a celebration of life service for both boys is going to be held this Saturday at 10 o'clock at Woodland Community Church on Highway 70 in Bradenton. These two boys represented some of the the best and brightest minds going to college today. Al and Kim's son Albert was an engineering prodigy and he was headed to the University of Central Florida to study engineering. My wife and I were proud of our son Zach. He was to attend Yale University and he wanted to study economics and pre-med. We are so grateful for the education and values they instilled here at Southeast High School. This school and its administrators and faculty and the students were such a big part of the boys' lives for the last four years that we appreciate the school district allowing us to, to speak to you today from here. Both families also appreciate school administration and faculty speaking to you on our behalf after the accident several weeks ago when it was still just too fresh and raw for us to do that. So they were strong for us when we could not be, and we'll be forever grateful for that. Our boys wanted to make the world a better place by solving problems and engaging with other cultures. That is the core of what the Inter Baccalaureate program here at Southeast High School teaches, to see the world as one community. Tragically, our sons lost their lives following their dream to explore these faraway places. They are missed terribly but we are reminded again and again how many people's lives they touched in their short time here, and so we know that their memory and spirit continues inside of all of us. The families would like to ask the media and the public for help. In the short minutes right after the boy's accident, a Canadian or a European doctor, who we believe was in Peru on vacation, stopped and attended to the boys. We were told that he offered comforting words and he tried to keep the boys still. We believe he spoke uh, French and English fluently. We do not have his name, we have only this photograph. Uh, the families would like to thank this good Samaritan for his kindness, but also to ask if the boys were able to speak and may have had any last words that they could share with us. If the news media can help us get this image out so that we can identify the doctor, please contact us. Uh, we have an, an email um, address uh, prepared and it is goodsamaritandr19 at gmail.com, goodsamaritandr19 at gmail.com. Uh, we would appreciate any tips. Also, we believe the bus that was carrying the boys held up to 12 passengers. The police did not record the names of any of those potential witnesses. We have statements the bus driver was speeding and passing in a no-passing zone before the accident, but the only testimony from on board that bus right now is that from the bus driver and his ticket taker, who happens to be his own father. Their testimony is not consistent with the facts. 
if you were on that Huerto bus on Route 28G on May 24th when the accident happened, or you know someone who was, or if you witnessed this accident, please contact us using that same Gmail address. We would like to express our appreciation to Senator Marco Rubio's office for diplomatic pressure that eased our travels. Uh, he made sure the paperwork got completed in time for us to bring the boys home. The Vice Consul, Will McGee, of the U.S. Embassy in Lima met with us personally and offered his full support and made sure that the Peruvian authorities had their paperwork done on their side. We're also grateful to the Mosaic Company, which has mines in Peru, for generously providing a car and a driver and an interpreter the entire time that we were in Peru to return our boys. Having a native language speaker with us who knew the roads was invaluable during this stressful period. We also have a network of friends far and wide that helped us to bring these boys home. This next segment is what our boys would want us to say about Peru because they were so kind and compassionate. It was a difficult journey to recover the boys, but we were honored to do it. And along the way, we met the people of Peru and their hearts went out to us. Sorrow knows no language barriers. Um, they helped us set up a cross for the boys. At the roadside where the accident happened, they helped us set up this cross for the boys. Uh, and then on the flight from Miami down to Lima, a kind Peruvian woman gave us this gold cross to bring blessings on our family during our sad journey. And we have it with us today. Peru is a beautiful country and it's filled with many kind and generous people. Our boys' lives were taken from us by the reckless, negligent, and we believe criminal act of one individual, not an entire country. Our boys would not want you to hate Peru because of what happened to them. They would want you to keep an open mind and to visit it one day for yourself. Those are the values instilled by the IB program here at Southeast High School. While the families mourn the loss of the boys, our spirits have been lifted by a scholarship fund the community has set up in their memory. The value of this fund has grown quickly in recognition of how special these boys were to so many. And we're grateful that the Community Foundation of Sarasota has offered to use their expertise to take the fund under their wing. This endowment will offer financial assistance to two IB students a year right here at Southeast High School in honor of Albert and Zach's memory. Honoring our boys in this fashion is heartwarming for the families and we are touched by the outpouring of generosity. If anyone within hearing is interested in making a contribution to the fund, we invite you to visit the fund page by going to www.gofundme.com and simply searching for Albert and Zachary. In closing, on behalf of the Ailes and the Morris families, we thank you for your time this morning. There's no repairing a loss such as this. There's only learning to cope with it. Our sons are gone, but we can honor their memory and fight for justice on their behalf. We're surrounded by an amazing network of friends, family, coworkers, peers, and support groups who have reached out to us and lifted us up. We ask for your continued prayers on this journey. And again, the contact information about the doctor or any witnesses is goodsamaritandoctor19.com uh, at, at gmail.com. This concludes our prepared remarks and we would do our best to answer any questions that you may have. Two young men, they're short young lives. They did already so much. How do you want them to be remembered? How should people remember these two young men? Well, we believe that the scholarship is, uh, is a beautiful way of carrying their memory forward. Uh, they meant so much to many different people. They weren't just students. They were heavily involved in the community uh, and in doing community service. And uh, so I think everyone will remember them in their own way. Uh, but we, we really believe 
um, the, the boys spent more time here at school than they did at home for the last four years. Uh, this school is where their identity was created. And so it's very touching and special for us that a scholarship fund in their name uh, may come out of this. Having that lasting endowment, yeah. I think it's gonna be key. Uh, with the understanding that they met and flourished here at Southeast High School in the IB program, having that endowment and having their names live on here is important to us. And I'd like to add that both boys lived their lives to the fullest. They gave to their community their environment, their family and their friends, and and all of these kids, like Robert, I mean, they'll live on and continue the legacy of the boys, but to just don't be afraid and get out there and, and do the right thing and, and, and just try to do their best. This is a question. Um, I, I'll, I'll take a stab at that. Uh, we, one of the things we did when we were in Peru was that we met the medical team that worked on our boys and we thanked them for trying to save them. Uh, we met the ambulance driver that drove them to the hospital and we thanked him. Um, this doctor offered, he didn't have to get involved, uh, but he did. And so it means a lot to us to simply thank him for showing that kindness uh, to our boys. Uh, and if it were possible that they were able to say some words, um, we would love to know what they were. We would love to know. And just, just thank them. Thank them for being good Samaritans. As a doctor, he may have felt a responsibility, but as a man, he did the right thing. And he protected our boys when we couldn't be there. Yeah. What were the boys' dreams and goals? I know, uh, you know, it's been engineering and pre-med, but what were they aiming to do? Do you want to talk about Alvin? I can, yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he was my go-to. Anything that was broke, he could fix it. Um, it's more than just a dad bringing his iPhone to his son. Uh, I, you know, we're, we're talking about automotive needs. The kid had a knack and, and a gift with, uh, with a screwdriver and a wrench. And, and, and a pure love to take stuff apart, and I got a, the garage to prove it. Uh, had a passion for engineering. Loved to draw, uh, loved to draw schematics, and, and really wanted to work in the auto, automotive industry was his passion, and, and with engines specifically. So uh, really used what he learned here in the engineering department under Richard Platt, and, and used it as a springboard to laser focus on what he wanted to do in college. Yeah. Um, our son Zach um, was, was involved with Albert in the engineering program. Uh, he wanted to go to Yale and study economics. He wanted to, to do uh, enough of the core classes to be pre-med. Uh, he had a four-year Navy scholarship, so he would have come out of Yale as an officer, and he wanted to see the world. Uh, he had a passion to learn about other cultures. As a matter of fact, Albert and Zach, this is photograph. This is the last photograph we have of them together. This was from a camera that we recovered at the accident scene. And it had about 50 beautiful, precious photographs of the boys in the last three hours of their lives. And this is one of them. Two young men with joy on their faces, exploring a, a different country and a different culture. And this is how we will remember those boys. Albert and Zach had planned every summer to take a trip somewhere in the world and, and to explore it. And so you're asking what our, our son's uh, plans were. Uh, after serving in the Navy, he wanted to become a doctor and uh, he wanted to uh, serve in uh, Africa. Uh, he was very inspired by one of his Yale interviewers, Dr. French, who had spent a lot of time there. Uh, and he uh, wanted to learn Swahili and uh, uh, serve. He wanted to serve people. And that's one of the things that set these two boys um, really apart was their service and altruistic attitude. And I, I have to credit Southeast High School for uh, creating that spark in them. 
they weren't just here to be students and have a good time and learn for themselves. They were looking for ways to make a difference in their community. Can you explain the, the you said the, the ticket taker or there were no witnesses on the report or? Well, I can explain uh, to, to a limited degree. Uh, in the United States, we benefit from a very well evolved and uh, technically competent accident um, investigation core. Uh, in Peru, uh, they're not as, um, as, as trained as we are. They do the best they can. Uh, but when um, our, our two boys, from the evidence that I have seen, our two boys were sitting on a scooter stationary on the side of the road waiting to cross it when the bus the, and keep in mind the intersection had an 18 mile per hour speed limit okay 18 miles per hour uh, this bus hit the boy so hard my boy flew 80 feet okay broadside. Uh, hit them broadside um, we believe the boys were sitting there waiting to turn when the bus swerved off of the road and hit them uh, we received it at three this morning, the, t the preliminary accident investigation report. Uh, and of course, the only version of the facts are coming from the bus driver. And his father. And his father. Who was on the bus. And so that's part of our plea for anyone who may have been on the bus or witnessed it, uh, because the, the facts of what happened to the boys uh, versus the version uh, that's being told to the police down there do not do not add up. What was their version? Uh, their version is that the boys uh, turned uh, into the bus and hit the bus uh, head on. Uh, the damage to the bus, the damage to the scooter, the damage to the boys does not jive with that interpretation. All of, of the, the damage to the boys and the scooter were on their left sides, right? The sides that were broadsided, not as described. And we'll be we'll be conveying our concerns to the uh, U.S. Embassy in Lima, in the hopes that they can apply pressure and we can ensure that a proper investigation is done. Is there any significance to the bracelets? Uh, yes. Thank you for asking. Uh, the bracelets have letters on them, and I don't know if you can zoom in, but uh, they stand for Long Live Zach Morris and Al Ailes, and these were prepared by uh, family friends. They made several hundred of these, and we have been wearing them, and we have been passing them out to their friends. Um, these boys were beloved at this school. They were leaders at this school, and there are hundreds of students that are hurting right now, and we're trying to do what we can to help them heal as well. My last question, a lot of respect for you guys. How are you guys able to maintain your strength in the midst of this dark time? Um, One step at a time, right. and our friends, family, and community, and that's it. And we we have a mission to help recognize the legacy of these boys and that's the only way that we can get through this there's so we've received so many cards um emails uh it's hard to even open the cards we have a lot of sympathy cards we haven't opened we just can't um the the, the folks at yale reached out to us and expressed their sorrow the folks with the navy department uh, We've had um, uh, the clergy have helped us. We, we have prayer groups, uh, Cross Point, uh, Pastor Jeff Weaver. Um, it's just been the community has wrapped their arms around us, and that's been uh, sustaining for us. The outpouring of support has been amazing. I, I think for us specifically, it's it's family, it's friends. You know, taking the burden from us when we couldn't handle it ourselves, and and more importantly. The work that we're doing now, you know, I can, can almost see my boy sitting in the office looking at me going, you know, all right, toughen up. Um, more importantly, letting their names live on through the scholarship fund and, and through this endowment, working with the Sarasota Community Center is important to us. So please pass that message along if you can.
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.